Well, hi, everybody. Welcome again to another edition of Tartar Sauce. And with me today, delighted to have Gene Olson, Director, Executive Director. I, I'm going to get your title right of the Peoria's Airport, but give us the full title because it's I always forget it. Director of Airports. Director of Airports. we have two. Two. And what, what, are the, what are the two? Uh, the Greater Peoria, General Wayne A. Downing, Peoria International Airport. Right. And the uh, Mount Holly Airport. Right. And we, we can't forget that because, you know, my, my daughter, who's been here a long time, uh, was amazed to find Mount Holly one day, like playing game, taking off. Like I didn't know there was an airport there. It was like, well, yeah, it's been here a while. Mount Holly's yeah. been there, mid '60s. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, no, no secret. Well, Gene, we, we were delighted to have you here because I think uh, people who have flown out of Peoria, flown into Peoria, uh, you know, have to see the difference. On and I'm saying it like it just happened. The, the, that terminal has been new for quite a while, but it seems like you break a record uh, almost monthly. Uh, what, what do you, what do you, you know, stat, why, why are you doing that? How's that happening? Well, um, I, th I, I'd say it's people's awareness of the value of their time and the convenience that the airport offers. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we have, we, we study a thing called leakage, which looks at, um, how many people from our market area buy a ticket and get on a plane somewhere else. Oh, okay. And we capture about 58% of the tickets in our market. And the big leak is to Chicago. Sure. So I think the more people drive to Chicago uh, and get caught in a traffic jam, uh, <laughs> have to pay for parking and right. those things, that's what drives them. Or an overnight us. stay, you know, because right. we've, we've done that where, you know, you get out first thing in the morning and you don't want to hazard that traffic in the, in Chicago traffic. Well, and the thing is you can get within two miles of O'Hare and then that last two miles can take <laughs> you 45 minutes. Which, not to, not to bring up uh, such things, but that was one reason that when Caterpillar said, oh, we're moving to the, the suburbs because it'd be closer to uh, the airports, I think some thought that, well, you know, it's just like you said, yeah, yeah sometimes that's true and sometimes it's not, even that's though right. you might be up there, but we won't get off on that. Um, <laughs> but no, the, the parking is free and has been for some time. Um, was that a difficult decision? I know that you've been there 10 years, so that was made before your time. That's right. So what, what have you heard about that? Was that a, a, was that a back and forth with your board, or did they always want to do it, or how did that work? No, well, it, there are still board members that are on the board now that were on then, mm -hmm. and the, the stories they tell is that um, whether, it was, whether it was real or just perception, the, the fact that an airport down the road had free parking seemed to be a big draw. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, you know, after I came in, it was, uh, you know, already done. Right. And um, it, w it was kind of referred to as a really great marketing move. Mm -hmm. um, it blew about, a, as one commissioner told me, it blew about an $800,000 hole in the budget. Um, for that year or, or that period year. of two? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I used to run the parking lot at, at my previous airport, and we earned $1.2 million a year. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's more now. Right. Um, off the parking lot. So where was that? That was Evansville, Indiana. Okay. Um, and it, so it, it is a, a financial um, kind of hit for the airport. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it removes a big impediment and gives us a huge competitive advantage. I, I know that's, and, and again, not to direct it to, to something else, but I know when I was on the paper covering city council meetings or whatever, and it's been the same discussion for years in downtown Peoria where there's a feeling about parking and, and ironically now there's a need for more parking in the warehouse district mm -hmm. and and but downtown is we don't we don't really have too many problems there but the the meet there i know there's a feeling that if you got rid of the meters that might be more inviting for people to come downtown and whether that's true or not it'd be the same thing they'd take a hit and the lord knows the city needs its money but um i think there's a gain there on the marketing side well, we, we actually have metered parking, too. Right. Um, so very close-in right parking, we have meters there. And that's to try to make those parking spaces turn over. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're just popping in for a minute, you can still get a close spot. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if... if but you better feed the meter. You, yeah, you have to feed the meter <laughs> in, in those close-in spots. Um, but, but we do have other parking that doesn't look as close-in, but it's actually close. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's just one of those things that you know parking had a lot to do with it but changes in the mark in the air service market had a lot to do with it too um one of the things we were talking about earlier is is the challenge and you were talking about leakage and where people go once they buy an airline ticket and you know how much do you compete with you mentioned you from you you originally worked at evansville but i'm thinking bloomington 
uh, Quad Cities, uh, other airports, downstate airports that you know uh, sometimes may have a separate, a different carrier that, that might be attractive. Are you in competition with those guys? Or are you guys? How do you look at that? I mean, you're probably friendly with the, the other directors. Well, there there's some things that we're in competition on, and there's some things that we cooperate on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when when it comes to statewide legislation, um, things like that, we're we're all, all on the same team. Um, when it comes to you know, trying to get an air carrier to come to your airport. Um, we're we're not just, <laughs> yeah. and we're not just competing with the airports up and down the interstate. Uh, right. We're competing essentially with uh, every other airport in the country mm -hmm. uh, because the airlines can deploy an airplane any place they want. Right. Um, and so you have to convince them that it's a good investment on their part to deploy that airplane to your airport. Does, does it, now, I don't know where Peoria fits in size-wise, say, with other airports, I think our airport is, is uh, remarkable. Uh, I don't want to say for a city this size because it's serving really a large area, not just Peoria, but Peoria area. But is it, is it, a, is it a battle to convince these carriers sometimes to, to serve the smaller airport, the smaller city? Uh, because, you know, I know there have been changes in their business, uh, in airline business. Well, the, when you have a certain base of population and a certain uh, base of economic activity, you're, you're going to attract the attention of the airlines. Mm -hmm. But, um, again, it's, it's trying to get them to, to start service and maintain service. Um, you know, there's a, a nationwide pilot shortage going on right now. I've heard that, yes. Um, and, and, for example, the Airline Pilots Association wants to kind of poo-poo that and say that it was just economic. But there were some things that Congress did uh, 10 years ago that kind of dried up the pipeline in terms of people entering the profession. Is it still compulsory uh, retirement at 65? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. So that, um, that eliminates well, and what well happens, trained pilots going right out. Yeah, they, they leave uh, due to age and then they pull their pilots from the regional airlines, which are the ones that serve us. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and then there's nobody entering the pipeline from the other end. Mm. Um, it used to be that a large percentage of airline pilots came from the military. Right. Now it's like 40% of, mm. of airline pilots out there come from the military. So the big, um, the big source is university flight training programs like Southern Illinois University, Indiana State University, um, Parkland Junior College, which used to be U of I's program, mm -hmm. uh, University of Dubuque, uh, Purdue. They all have flight training programs, and they also have airport administration programs. So I get to hire, oh. you know, folks from those schools. Yeah. Um, Good. And uh, and for example, my son is down at SIU in the aviation technology program, learning mm. to be a mechanic. Oh, um, really? And uh, uh, but but when you come out of the, one of those programs, you're going to have somewhere between 200 and 400 hours of flight time. Mm. Um, and then the new rule is you got to have 1,500. Um, so what do you do for those hours? You, you flight instruct and you kind of learn, you forget all the crew management um, techniques that you learned while you were in school. Oh, man. Well, and, and you think, because I'm sure that the, the pilot in a uh, top airline is, is a good job. I mean, a well-paying job. I mean, I, I'm sure it's a stress job, too, because you're working a lot, a lot of hours, you're traveling all over. But you think that would be something people, you know, could gear up for, hey, Son or daughter? How about women? Takes uh, well. Yeah. I mean, we're we're suffering from a sh uh, shortage of women in aviation. I was, was going to say, I don't, you don't see many women pilots. You, you're you're seeing more and more. Okay. Um, you know, I don't I don't get to meet a lot of pilots anymore. Mm -hmm. But I when I drive around, my car has an airplane radio in it. <laughs> and uh, what a surprise! Yeah. Well, I mean, I have to have that to get permission to drive on the field. Of course. But um, you know, you hear the voices, and you're hearing more and more female voices, both in um, in the airlines and in general aviation, which includes corporate aviation. Yeah, because you know, not, you, you, we all have stereotypes. You know, especially older people that, that have grown up with with these things, and it's always the captain, the voice of the captain comes forward. And yeah, why isn't it? Yeah, you know, and then the stewardess would be a female, of course. But now those roles are, are interchanged. I mean, right. You have exactly. Male stewards and everything else. Um, you, you know, people will probably say, you know, I'd love to fly out of Peoria, but you don't go to such and such, you know, whatever their destination is. They maybe, you know, have family or whatever there. Um, how difficult is it to, you know, start? You mentioned, for instance, the carrier is looking at your airport to see what kind of flow you get. 
Um, are you always shopping for new places, or how does, how does that start, that process of, hey, we should go to Keokuk or wherever it is? Yeah. So um, there's, there, we have four airlines at our airport, and three of them, American, United, and Delta, mm-hmm. um, are pretty much the traditional carriers that are left. There have been so many right. mergers and acquisitions that um, there's really only on, on the you know east of the Mississippi there's really only three big brand names left that are traditional network carriers. Um, so we try to meet with them you know at least once a year, mm-hmm. um, make to make sure that they know everything that's going on in Peoria mm-hmm. and not just Caterpillar. Right. They all know that Caterpillar moved their headquarters, so we mm-hmm. have to remind them that there's still <laughs> you know 12,000 employees of Caterpillar. In, mm-hmm. in central Illinois and that they fly out of our airport every day. And there's like 300,000 people in this area that right. they'd like to fly to. Exactly. Yeah. And, we, and we sit down with them. We talk about all the great things that are going on in Peoria, um, things like Jump Trading Center, um, autonomous stuff. Mm-hmm. All, and I'm, I don't want to insult anybody by leaving no. them out, but right, right. all the new um, kind of high-tech companies that are they're putting a foothold in right. central Illinois. Um, and then we, we try to convince them that connecting our airport to, you know, point B um, is going to be a good thing for them. Um, and then we is, usually... Is that your job? Are you the sales guy on this? Or well, I, have, have I, have a team? A, I have a team, yeah. <laughs> um, I have a, a great team. I'm thinking of Mad Men or something like this, how you put the thing on the, on the well, tripod and then look over here. Yeah. We have an internal team and we use uh, an air service consulting firm. Mm-hmm. Um, they do a lot of the number crunching for us. Right. But, the relationships between the airport and the community are, are pretty much us. Um, so, what? And, and then we also have to reach out to the community to get them to understand that what we have is pretty much a use it or lose it situation. Mm-hmm. In November of 2018, um, we, we look at we look at um, what we call load factor. So it's the percentage of available seats that are filled, mm-hmm. um, and then we also look at yield, which is the cents per seat mile. Um, of revenue that the airline is getting. And um, you can get away with a lower load factor if your revenue is really high. In mm-hmm. other words, your ticket prices are really high. Mm-hmm. Um, but that tends to discourage people from flying on the airplane. Sure. So um, you, it's kind of a balance. Right. And in November of 2018, uh, Delta pulled the Detroit service because not enough people were using it. And that used to be, I know I fly east and Oftentimes, Detroit was the connecting point. Right, you know. right. So pretty much, if you want to go east on Delta, you have to go to Atlanta now. Mm-hmm. If you want to go west, you go to Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. Um, Detroit was able to cover both of those, and we were sort of pushing Detroit as an alternative to O'Hare because everybody hates O'Hare. <laughs> um, so the Is that interest- a T-shirt or something? Are you <laughs> selling out of your I don't gift know, shop? Maybe, <laughs> maybe we- but uh, you know, O'Hare is a great airport. Yeah. Um, it's just, it, it's overcrowded. Right. Um, it's getting better in that regard because they've reoriented runways and, and added runways. So their capacity issues are wor- not as bad as they used to be. Um, I've found people in central Illinois are very focused on O'Hare mm-hmm. and they don't understand that we have other options. You, you can, there's, we, we connect to four of the five busiest hubs in the world. Hmm. Um, so you can use those alternative hubs. What are they? Uh, Atlanta, Minneapolis, um, Dallas, um, United just goes to O'Hare, mm-hmm. um, Charlotte, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you fly and connect over Charlotte, you can connect all up and down the East Coast. Mm. Um, it's a great East Coast hub. But if you're, if you're a million miler on Delta, you're not going to want to do that no. because you're going to want to stay on Delta. Has that <laughs> but, become a big thing, the, the, the card? Uh, oh, the, it the, has the, continued to be a yeah. huge thing, yeah. Yeah, the, the airline miles. Yeah. Um, what what is what do you hear? Um, and I'm, I'm sure it varies depending on what's going on. But what's the not, not to turn this negative? But but I, you know we want to share everything here. Uh, what's the biggest complaint you get from people once they say, "Oh, you you run the airport"? Okay. Um. Gosh. Don't get any. Just well, love it. we we get complaints. A lot of times the complaints are for something the airline did. Right. Um, delays or whatever. And, yeah. and a lot of times the complaint is related to somebody missing their flight. And then when you dig into the details, you find out that they showed up way too late. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And um, 
right now I'd say the, the biggest complaint that I get, and I'm, I'm sort of airing dirty laundry when I say <laughs> this, but we, we bought furniture for um, the meter greeter area and some of the hold room, and that stuff is now eight years old, mm. um, and and it's getting worn out. And, um, <laughs> well, that means you've had people using it. We've so had a, a lot deal. of people using it, yeah. and they're, we're doing a request for proposals pro process right now to buy new furniture for those areas, oh. um, and they are they are starting to look pretty worn. Well, so that, that's good news for people that, that maybe are worried about the furniture at the airport. You, you mentioned O'Hare, and I'm thinking, and this is well known to people that have flown out of Peoria, uh, whatever the connecting flight is, it's almost like an exercise program because you fly, I mean, it depends, I know, and, and you would know this better than I, but you, you sometimes forget, and you know, I landed in O'Hare, and I, had, I thought I had a half hour you know, before the next flight. It was, it was nicely timed, and then I realized, whoa, it's gonna take me 20 minutes to get to there. Right. So I'm, I'm really cutting, it was, you know, it was fairly close. When I fly through O'Hare, I don't set up anything shorter than a one hour connection. Right. Um, the last time I traveled through O'Hare, I had three hours, so I was able to get a nice Italian meal. <laughs> it was totally the opposite of an exercise program. <laughs> and uh, I, I was sitting there just killing time, and I saw an airline pilot friend of mine go by who's, um, his son was in the same scout troop as my son. Oh, and wow. I ran over and tapped him on the shoulder. And, you know, airline pilots don't get tapped on the shoulder very often, <laughs> and so he was pretty startled. But it was fun to see him. Well, I tell you, people, the one thing you say about O'Hare, it's a people-watching paradise. Oh, because yeah. you sit there at the restaurant or, or bar or whatever it is, and, and you know, the world f floats by, you know, in, in all shapes and sizes. Yeah. Well, the same thing happens at our airport. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's true. And, and now the, the, you've got a new wing if I'm not mistaken, and I would say new, it's probably something you had for a while, but you go up the ramp and it's another area. When did right. that start? Uh, when did you put that on? That's, that's the Ray LaHood International Terminal. Okay. And that opened in 2016. Okay. Um, the, 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 gener or the, thing, the genesis of that was um, two, really two things. Uh, we opened the, the new terminal in 2011, and within a couple of years, we filled it up. Right. Um, at the same time, we got a letter from Customs that said, we've got design standards now, um, and your facility, that we provide them for free, by the way, um, <laughs> doesn't meet their standards anymore, so that we have to build them something new or they're going to leave town. Gee. Um, so we looked around, we did a site selection study and kind of a feasibility study, and we figured out that the best thing w was going to be to build a new facility. Um, and so at the same time, we... So customs occupies the downstairs, the main floor, and then the upstairs is kind of a dual purpose hold room. Right. So we can run international flights or domestic flights out of there. And we built two new uh, jet bridges. Right. And um, we great. actually have to watch what aircraft go there. We can't, we can't put two big airplanes over there. Hmm. There's times when Allegiant will have two Airbuses on the ground at the same time. Hmm. And so we put one of them in the main building at gate 10, and we put the other one over in the new building at gate 14, and then there's only enough uh, capacity by the fire codes to have um, a regional jet in right. there. Because of the seating for the people and all that stuff. Yeah. Right, right. Um, we we're almost running out of time here, Gene, because this is so fascinating, talking about the airport with Gene Olson. Uh, I have to tell you, though, the, the, the comfort level of the Peoria's airport is so great. It has been for, for a number of years, but I remember my mom was visiting, and I saw her, she came from the east, from New Hampshire, and she, we, she was flying back, and we, I go out with her, and we're sitting down there, and we, at that time it was uh, the right, I don't know what number it was, but we're chatting away, and her plane left while we were sitting there oh, talking. No. <laughs> because I don't know if we were engrossed in the conversation or we were just too dense to worry, but she got an next flight out, it was not a problem, but it, it's that, I, I think you have a, a different atmosphere at the Pure Airport. I mean, we love it. O'Hare, I don't say we love it, but O'Hare is, we know it's busy, as you said, almost too busy. But Peoria's airport can be busy, but it has a you know, comfort level that I think is maybe one reason why you're doing so well. Well, and, and we try to make it that way. Um, we try to make sure that everybody understands that no one has to fly out of our airport. Mm -hmm. And so we have to try to make them want to fly out of our airport. So customer service, being friendly, um, you know, it, it's not uncommon to see me, like if I see somebody in the, in, the, in the public side and they've got a welcome home sign for mm -hmm. someone, um, those are usually military, but not always. Mm -hmm. And 
um, I will frequently take that person to the other side of the security so that they can meet their oh, nice. their loved one coming off. And you know, you're, you're not going to get that at O'Hare. No. <laughs> <laughs> the personal touch. The right. director himself says, hey, "Go on in here." Yep. Well, Gene, this is great. We, we're, we're out of time. Um, we'd lo love to have you back when uh, you know there's news to talk about or or just just a general update. So sure. Appreciate it. Thanks Gene for having Olson. me. Well, Gene Olson's been our guest here on Tardis Us. We'll see you next time. PeoriaLife.com.